Hey, this is Jackson Rose with Physical Science Section 8. This is my lab presentation for January 13th. I chose Lab 9.3, Measuring Height with a Stopwatch. The purpose of this experiment is to measure the height of a long distance without using a ruler. This experiment consists of dropping a ball from the ceiling to the floor and timing it to see how long it takes. Then, using simple equations, I'll find out how long that distance is. Then, I'll take a tape measure and measure the same distance, and then I'll compare my two distances, measuring with time and measuring with a tape measure. I predict that the distance I get from measuring height with time and measuring height with a measuring tape will be within 10-15% to 15 of each other. The supplies I'm using differ slightly from the supplies listed in the textbook. I'll show you how. I am using a stopwatch, and I won't be using a chair or step ladder. I'm just going to stand at the top of the stairs and drop the ball from the balcony. That way I get a higher drop. I'll be using a ball, a tape measure, eye protection, and I'm adding a grabber to the experiment. Simply put, steps one through three tell you to drop the ball from the ceiling, then start the stopwatch, and when the ball hits the ground, stop the stopwatch, so you can see how long it takes for the ball to get from point A to point B. Then you write it down and then do it nine more times. So rather than grabbing a ladder and just dropping it from the ceiling, we're gonna be using this. And put the ball inside, and release the trigger and drop the ball like that. From the ceiling, way up there, down to here. The reason I'm using the grabber is so I can reach the highest ceiling in my house. Plus it's so I can have consistency and drop the ball from the same point each time. So I'm using the cell phone in my left hand to try to time each drop as accurately as possible. Now I didn't just take the same clip and paste it on here 10 times, I really did drop the ball as many times as I'm supposed to. So here I've listed the times of all of the drops. Step 5 says once you've done the experiment 10 times, average the results by adding them all together and dividing by 10. Unless you live in a very tall house, the result you get should be less than 1 second. Apparently I live in a pretty tall house, because my average was 1.01 seconds. Step 6 says to use the average time in equation 9.3 to determine the distance over which the ball fell. And my tape measure is marked off in feet, so I'll be using the equation of 32 feet per second squared. So here I've got my calculations. I've got distance equals 1 half times 32 feet per second squared times 1.01 seconds squared. Cut that 32 in half, and I've got 16 feet per second squared times 1.01 seconds squared, which equals 16.3216 feet which is what I got out of dropping the ball. Step 7 says to measure the height of the ceiling with your tape measure or ruler. And this is the distance that I got, 17.125 feet. Here's the comparison between the distance that I got based on dropping the ball and the distance that I got from measuring with the ruler. The two distances that I got were within less than 5% of each other, so it went pretty well. I think that using the grabber may have added some extra experimental error. I tried to start the stopwatch at the same time as I released the trigger, but the grabber mechanism may have introduced some off timing as far as releasing the ball at the right time. Twice I had to reach for a clip like this one due to the ball launching too far out and hitting the wall. Okay, that's, that's not going to work. We're going to have to do that. Now, although I'm not as good at computer drawing as Mrs. Garmong is, I'm going to try my best. Now, believe it or not, I found even more experimental error that isn't even listed in the book. So, if you look at the red line from the ceiling to the floor, that's the distance I measured with the tape measure. But, the ball didn't fall from that far up. I should have measured from the green arrow, since that's the distance that the ball actually fell. The first thing that came in my head when I started this experiment was that this is going to have several experimental errors. The start and stop times was by far the largest error. The rest are fairly small. Things such as air resistance, the ball deformation, the accuracy of the stopwatch, etc. At 4 BC, during the times of Aristotle, people believed that the heavier an item is, the faster it fell. Not until many, many years later in the 1600s did Galileo determine that items fall at a constant rate, no matter what their size. History has it that he dropped different sized cannonballs from the Leaning Tower of Pisa to demonstrate his findings. Around 1666, Isaac Newton determined that the mass of items and their distance from their centers determine the gravitational constant. For this class, Galileo's equation works fine. Hypothetically speaking, I think measuring with time might be useful in a situation like this one. 
Suppose a smart person, such as myself, is rock climbing, and he doesn't know how much rope to buy to get back down to the bottom. So, he simply throws a rock to the bottom and watches for it to shatter. He times it, and then goes back and buys the appropriate amount of rope. This method can also be useful to find out how high you are from anywhere, as long as you can drop something safely. This session may be recorded.